let's dive in. You'll be very familiar with the summary report, the first stop in LeadsRx. And this is where we ask the question, how are my conversions performing? On this page, you'll see the visitors that come to your site, identities, you'll see the total number of conversions, the percentage of those visitors that converted, and then the last tracking event. Of course, too, you'll also see the option to choose a date range. So we have options for preset dates on that left-hand column, or you can certainly set a custom time frame. Now we can answer this question with a little more elaboration. How are my conversions performing within a given time frame? Now, knowing this is our question on the report, what's the answer? We can look and see overall, we have a lot of different identities and we have that percentage 3.81% of conversions. We'd ideally want that percentage to be as high as possible. Also then want to draw your attention to the conversion segmentation report. We do know that most of our conversions are orders placed. So that is just over 93%. With this, we know the conversion performing best is one that's making us money. For your specific conversions, um, certainly you'll be the best at determining which ones are the most important for the success of your company. Now, before we move forward, quick tip on that last tracking event. Depending on the frequency of visitors to your site, if that tracking event happened more than just a few seconds ago, something might be wrong with your pixel. If you see this is the case, contact our team, support at leadsrx.com. We can help you find the source of the problem as well as a solution. So now we're gonna go just under that summary report on the sidebar, we're gonna go over to attribution. And in attribution, we can ask ourselves here, what touch points and channels are responsible for driving conversions? Um, you'll see here that you can choose to look at your conversion types combined or the single list. You can look at first time repeat uh, conversions or both, depending on what you're really looking for. And then um, looking at the pie chart, you'll see the lens touch point as well as grouping for that attribution segmentation report. Another key option we need to cover, attribution models. So one of our most frequently asked customer questions that we hear is, what attribution model should I use? You'll see we have seven different attribution models. So the answer, what should I use is, it depends. The type of model you use is really going to be whatever makes the most sense for your marketing strategy. Each attribution model credits touch points in a customer's path differently. So what I mean by that is say, let's take the linear multi-touch attribution model. For example, if there are five customer touch points in their path to conversion, each of those touch points is going to get 20% credit. So again, the credit you want each touch point to have is going to depend on your marketing strategy. If you're curious about attribution models, want to learn more, we do have an excellent help article available. It's in the online help center. So to get there, you're going to simply go over to your name in that upper right-hand corner, look at the drop-down list, you'll find the online help center article. Now let's answer our question. So what touch points and channels are responsible for driving conversions? So looking at all conversions combined in the touch point lens, we'll see that our Sweatcoin app is at the top with Instagram close behind. And then once we navigate over to the groupings lens, we'll see our paid social channels are responsible for the most conversions. Keep in mind, I'm answering this question from an all conversions combined lens. Looking at a specific conversion would be a natural next step in analysis. So now we've looked at the touch points and groupings responsible for driving conversions. The next thing we're gonna do is go over to Journey Analytics, to the Journey Analytics report, answer a few more questions. So on Journey Analytics, our next question is, how influential are my touch points in driving conversions? If you attended our analytics webinar back in February, you'll recall we discussed this report in the context of understanding what stands out about any particular touch point. So that is part of analyzing influence. And on this page, we can understand the average time to conversion, 
the median time to conversion, as well as the average length of path of a touch point. Quick note on average versus median. The median number is more likely going to be useful to you because the average can be skewed based on any outliers in the data. So on this page, you can also find the top single touch points. Our friend Sweatcoin app is at the top here. And then just to the right of it, you'll see the top combination touch points. So when analyzing a touch point's influence, the length of path in particular is very telling about a touch point's performance. A long touch point path means that touch point cannot influence people to convert on its own. So it must be supported by other touch points. And then answering our questions, how influential are my touch points? We can see our median time to conversion is 8.2 minutes. Considering we've been in this webinar about that time, 8.2 minutes is pretty quick. So we can say our touch points are pretty influential because soon after people see the ad, they are driven to perform that conversion. So from here, we could look at that call to action on the ad, then work to apply it to other creative pieces. And now that we understand the touch point influence, how could we see customer journeys? Several of them. Let's go down just under journey analytics, click on journey maps. So under journey maps, we can see here, there it is. Um, all conversions or specific type is your option once again. You can look also at first time converters, repeat converters, or both. And then you'll see a specific option, filter by touch points. So that way you can hone in on a particular touch point in a customer's path. In this case, let's check out Facebook referral. So here we can answer the question, how can I get a snapshot of a customer's path to converting? It's right here on this reporter. Now to see an individual profile, what you're going to do, simply select a name from the list. Then you'll be able to see how a customer reached your site, the number of pages they viewed, and the length of time spent on each page. So with this individual, we can see he reached our site through a Facebook referral, spent less than two minutes on each page looking at protein bar variety packs, left one in his cart for a little over an hour and a half, and then made a $29.99 purchase. So I also wanna take a minute to address another frequently asked question, which is how do we identify repeat customers with data passed into our system? Some of these factors include self-identified information like email or phone. We can also use IP address and then cookies if available. Now that we know the path of this one individual in finding protein bars, let's look at how to spot any patterns in customer journeys. So we'll go back on over to the main page. And then in the main page, what I'm going to draw your attention to specifically are the buttons in the right, download non-converters, and then download conversions. So selecting download conversions provides you with every conversion in a row as a CSV file, including all the touch points that led to a conversion. Then download non-conversion is going to be similar, but instead shows a visitor's journey to interacting with touch points, then leaving without converting. So the non-converters report also has page view information, and that allows you to see where on the site a visitor left without converting. We recommend using these particular files to build pivot tables and then extract the specific information you need for analysis. So now that we've looked at conversion performance, we've looked at touch point influence, we know how to look for patterns in customer journeys. Let's look at some trends in touch points and conversions over time. So to do that, we'll shift gears a little bit, go to campaign performance, and then click on the performance report. So with the performance report, our question is, how are my touch points and conversions performing over time? So on this page, we can see whether interactions are trending up or down. And then another thing we can do, we can get pretty granular. We can see our interactions and conversions by day, by day of week, even by hour. Like I said, pretty granular. So this measure of interactions indicates how the consumers are engaging with your content. And then the conversions are indicating the frequencies of customers placing an order, signing up for a newsletter, whatever it is, they're completing that desired action. So another note here, if you do have our impression pixel, this is where you're going to see it. It's in this report. 
So looking in, let's answer our questions now. We're going to go with the Sweatcoin app, our friend we've seen, because we know from other reports, Sweatcoin app is responsible for driving quite a few conversions. We know it's one of our most influential touch points. And then what we see here, though, is that over time, interactions and conversions have been trending down with the biggest spikes in both on the 21st. So from here, we could dive into what happened on the 21st to drive so many interactions and conversions. And then we could also examine any ad creative fatigue to understand why those are trending down over time. Of course, for your own analysis, you can always edit the attribution models, the conversions on which you focus, and then whether you want to view the report by touch points or by groupings. So it's really going to be up to you to look at data in a way that best answers how performance is going over time based on your business goals. So breathing for a moment here, I know I've thrown a lot of video clips, a lot of information at you. So we've gone through answers to various questions with the LeadsRx reports. Uh, now we're gonna bring it all together, uh, show an actual customer use case in how they were navigating through the system and where they could find answers. So to protect privacy, no customer names, company names, or actual data are shared. Uh, so let's go through this. Last month, our LeadsRx team noticed that one of our customers had a low percentage of signups for their service. So that number was just under 10%. We found that information in our first stop, that summary report. And then we said, next, let's look at the attribution report to understand what touch points and groupings are responsible for driving those conversions. That could help us understand what channels could be focused on in their marketing strategy. So then going into the attribution report, what we found is the paid search channel through the grouping lens was responsible for driving almost two thirds of those signups. So if you attended the analytics webinar back in February, our team did spend some time explaining that paid search is a frequent revenue driver for companies. So for this customer, we wanted to look at this grouping to understand how this paid search channel was performing over time. With that, we went to the performance report. Then in the performance report, we found something really interesting. We found conversions were trending up, but interactions were trending down. Naturally, when we connected with the customer, they asked us why this could happen and how they could potentially look to improve those numbers. So based on our time today, you'll find some of the advice we gave pretty familiar. So we already know low interactions could mean ad fatigue or something presented on a web page isn't driving customers to convert. I emphasize could because our LeadsRx team cannot definitively predict the behavior of your customers. We're here to provide insights and recommendations for analysis. So with that, what did we recommend? Uh, we recommended assessing touch points power of influence. So looking first at the journey analytics report to understand the length of path of each touch point and to see which ones were driving uh, people to sign up for their service uh, the most or the least. Uh, then the next step, uh, we said, go over to the journey maps report and go download that non-converters report uh, with a specific attention to that page view information. So though conversions for this customer are trending up, we really want to improve overall that sign up. And we wanted to understand why interactions, again, were trending down. So looking at the non-converters could help this customer understand where on the site people were leaving without signing up and then analyze any patterns. So with this knowledge, our customer could say, examine a page where people were repeatedly landing and then leaving. So with that, they can look at that particular page and then make decisions about how to better grab prospective customers, clarify information, or create a stronger call to action. I'll say it later on in the presentation. I'm gonna also say it now. Our mantra is people plus data equals better. So you, all of our customers, um, are the people part of this. And you have the expertise to modify your marketing strategies as you see fit. So now we've pulled some of those questions together. I would be remiss if I didn't mention our ROAS or return on ad spend report. So let's go there now. It's gonna also be under that campaign performance section of your sidebar. 
So with the ROAS report, we ask ourselves a big question. What's the dollar value attached to my marketing channels? So if you've entered revenue and ad spend data, I really hope you have, uh, LeadsRx will be able to provide calculations of your overall return on ad spend. So that calculation is gross revenue divided by advertising expenses. The overall return on ad spend section looks at scores of less than or greater than one. So say your ROAS is one exactly, you've broken even on ad spend, though that number does not inherently just factor in the costs of running a business. We also encourage all of our customers to research a ROAS benchmark that makes sense for your industry, because that score and what constitutes a strong one is going to depend greatly on your industry. We also would love to know if you have any specific ROAS goals, because we want to be supporting you in making sure you can meet that goal. So let's answer this question in our own ROAS report. So how are we doing? Well, our overall score is 2.76 definitely greater than one, we are doing better than breaking even. Also scrolling down in paid search, we can see our ROAS score is well over two. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that paid search is typically an important channel. So again, greater than two, uh, we know that the paid search grouping is contributing monetarily in a positive way. If you have touch points in the system that don't have ad cost, like organic search, but you do have revenue data, these unpaid touch points can be examined based on value per conversion. So value per conversion is calculated by revenue divided by conversions. And then because we are taking the time to focus on the basics, um, we do have multiple articles that you can find about ROAS in our online help center. So again, that same dropdown from your name. Um, because this report is so key, in evaluating uh, your marketing strategy, I recommend if you haven't already done so, definitely check out all of those articles and uh, videos. And then finally, we're gonna get into some true basics. Um, we've looked at multiple reports, but how do you set up your data effectively? So we're gonna go to our settings section. To navigate there, you hover over your company name. You can either select a specific setting or view all. In the view all, we have a lot of settings, so I highly recommend you look through all of those different descriptions to understand how different ones add value. This time around, we're gonna look at touch points and groupings. Uh, these two are really essential because they're gonna help you keep your data organized and analyze it more effectively. So one of the keys to interpreting your data in LeadsRx is understanding your touch points and then looking at and identifying how you want to group them. So touch points are how LeadsRx defines traffic coming to your website. So individual visits fall into those touch points and they're usually based on where the traffic originated. So Google search, referral from a website, offline touch points like a TV or radio ad. And then groupings are a way to look at multiple touch points together. So we've already seen a few like paid search and paid social in our time together today. Groupings can also be changed at any time to reflect how you want to see your marketing. Also note here, many touch points are tracked automatically, or you can add touch points manually. You can also add rules, like creating a touch point based on a UTM source. And then when a touch point is first detected, this is really important. When it is first detected, it goes into a generic group called default grouping. So touch points should be moved from this grouping pretty immediately into a more specific grouping before you try to analyze any data in LeadsRx. So if you do currently have a large number of touch points in default grouping, you've probably received an email or two from me encouraging you to move those. The reason is that if those touch points aren't moved, you won't get as clear a picture of your data. Um, and how effective it is really at driving conversions. So it's significantly more difficult to build a marketing strategy around 40 or so miscellaneous touch points than looking at paid search, paid social referrals, what have you. So now let's get into a how to move. So if you're making sure your touch points are moved into groupings, we recommend you do that once a week. And then um, you have two ways of looking at your data. So you can look at it by touch points, Google search, Bing search, Yahoo search, or by grouping like organic search. 
So for this moving, you move a touch point, you can hit that manage button on the far right hand side, and then you'll see an edit button as well as then a move button to select. Um, that's in the upper right hand corner. So then selecting this button will allow you, by the way, to add a touch point to an existing grouping, or you can always create a new grouping. Also make sure you're hitting save to confirm that move. And then finally, we are here. I already said our mantra before, um, but I'm gonna say it again. People plus data equals better. We mean it here. So our system gathers data that can be utilized and optimized in the way you need, but it is you all, the people in each company that are the experts. So you know your customers best, you know that you can come up with ideas that will make them happy. And then certainly you're the ones who define success at your company and can make decisions about your marketing strategy. We're simply your partners in showing you the data and assisting you with analysis. So in our last few moments, I know we've crammed a lot of information in. We're gonna give you a few best practice reminders and one extra tip. So the first major tip is something I just said, but check your touch points and groupings weekly. Um, again, make sure they're grouped the way you want so you can analyze everything more effectively. Also review your ROAS report on a monthly basis. This is going to help you get a better sense of how your campaigns are doing uh, based on dollar value. And then our fact here, did you know most of our report sections and again, those specific sections of reports can be downloaded from your LeadsRx system. So simply look out for that download CSV link to get the info you're looking for in spreadsheet form. Then you can play with filters, pivot tables, what have you zero in on your specific data. Then finally, we've mentioned the online help center a few times, but if you have questions, uh, definitely use that search bar in the online help center. Our team creates content all the time based on frequently asked customer questions. We have tons of articles and videos you can search for. So there's likely something there for you. And then if you don't have the answer you need, you can always email us. So that email is support at leadsrx.com. We've also published a recent article too that provides you best practices in how to log tickets, response time expectations, and also what happens when you need to work with our team on a multi-day issue where we're arriving at um, solutions that take a little bit. Uh, so we strive to help you as best as possible. And then that concludes the learning portion. I know we're a bit over time. Um, would love to answer a few questions. And then as always, we're constantly creating new content. We want to know how we did this time, what you want to hear in the future. Uh, so we welcome any and all feedback. Just email me, sarah at leadsrx.com.